My name is Dennis Perlin. I'm the author of Proposition 15. You could say that that is the beginning of the end of the war on drugs. And uh, it did change the world in the fact that it was just stoners and potheads and, uh, and now it always is medical. Always has been medical. It just, we forgot it. And somehow we forgot it. It was like our, our history had been lost. And uh, I began Prop 215 in 1990, when the AIDS epidemic hit me, myself, and, and my m members of my community. Uh, my lover died in 1990, and it was his eulogy that I did Proposition P. That was an initiative on the ballot, a local San Francisco initiative to legalize medical marijuana for people in San Francisco with AIDS. And uh, it started out as a eulogy for Jonathan, and uh, wound up to be a worldwide movement. Uh, it, also, uh, when Jonathan had AIDS and my friends had AIDS, they had no place to be or meet. They had no place to get marijuana. Marijuana helped them so much. It wasn't just uh, the munchies, which is a funny word, but the nausea, and, and the, made them feel better. There's no drug that makes you feel better than marijuana. And uh, when Jonathan died, I dedicated my life to, to, to thousands of Jonathans in the world who were suffering for purely political reasons. I started a club in the middle of the war on drugs in the belly of the beast, I did what could, they said it couldn't be done. I started a club for those people. And I, I put myself at great risk, because I could have gotten busted. As a matter of fact, I did, bust, did get busted. But not till six years later, uh, when the state bust, busted my club in an attempt to derail Proposition 215. From the day I started my club, I knew that I had to do, had to change the law. I knew I had to change the law. I went about a path of changing the law. First, I went to the state legislature. I got three bills passed through the state legislature trying to exempt AIDS patients, cancer patients, from the marijuana laws. Um, and then Governor Wilson, Wilson vetoed all three of them. And the course of that, it set the stage for Proposition 215. Essentially what I did is take the language from all those three bills that I had passed through the California State Legislature, put their wording into uh, the initiative, and collected a half a million signatures. In the end, 1.5 million signatures to put it on the ballot in 96. And uh, a lot of, uh, there's so many things happened between 90 and 96 that it's hard to enumerate. But basically I, I had a place where people could be it would not be so lonely, facing a critical illness in their life. The marijuana helps, but it wasn't just that. It was, not, it was about not being alone in America. You know, you have money, you're young, everyone wants to be with you. But you have a life-threatening disease, you have no money, you'd be surprised you don't have as many friends as you used to have. And uh, for those people, I started a club, a place where they could find friends just like themselves. And in the early stages of the epidemic, we had people being thrown out of their houses. We had uh, parents disowning their kids. And uh, it was a very lonely disease. There was no cure. There was no, there was no way. We didn't even know how it was transmitted. And, uh, and so for those people, I started a club in San Francisco, fully understanding that I could go to jail for this. But there are some things worth going to jail for. And uh, this, I felt, was worth it. Uh, if I went to jail to protect sick and dying people, well, so be it. And let, me, let me spend my time in prison and uh, let America see what they're doing. And my, my, part of me was to expose this war on drugs for what it really is, which is a war on patients, war on people, war on the most wonderful people of America, the most thinking and loving people of America, the people that smoke marijuana. And so my whole beginnings, is that been to legalize marijuana, but in the interim, maybe we could legalize this medical just for those people. And uh, it was uh, through that 90, 96 period that I realized that marijuana is a medicine for everybody. It's not just for AIDS patients and cancer patients and glaucoma and MS, not for them. It's for people like myself who, uh, I'm an alcoholic. I'm a stone cold alcoholic. Give me one drink, I'll do 20. And, uh, but marijuana helps me stay away from alcohol. And it's the only thing that has been helped me keep away from alcohol. Now for 28 years I've been sober. But without marijuana, I'd be out drinking again. But you know, that doesn't show up in an x-ray. That doesn't show up uh, uh, on, on a chart that I'm an alcoholic. But I am an alcoholic, a disease. It has, it's a disease recognized by the American Medical Association. And I have that disease. Marijuana helps me 
That's my medical. That's my medical reason. And when I wrote the, the initiative, I didn't write just 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 for sick and dying people. I wrote it for living, loving people that want to stay healthy, just like myself. And the, indeed, the last word of the initiative, the last two words, were migraine headaches, because I didn't want anybody squeezed out of this. And basically, what what people are, what the cops say, what the other people say, you are not sick enough. What does that mean? You're not you're not sick enough. Therefore, I should go. You should go to jail. But that's not me. I don't believe that. I believe you say you're using it for a medical reason. That is it. That is it. You don't deserve to go to jail because you're using a medicine that the state may not approve of.